what is up, my little maggots? If you think that's offensive, it's not offensive. It's simply the way that we treat Slipknot fans. That's what we call them. If you're not a Slipknot fan, what are you doing here? Please exit the room or the outdoor arena. No, you're not in an arena. There's a global pandemic. If you are in an arena, I hope you're staying two metres away from anyone else in that arena. Just just don't go to arenas is the, is the thing right now. Um, this is a bit of a weird one because this is technically the first downbeat episode that is going up on notfest.com, but I'm sort of cheating because this is an old episode, but it's with V-Man, so... You know, I've had to rehash. I don't know if I mentioned there's a pandemic. There's also some hornets I've been reading about. Don't really want to read any more about them. But um, we're kicking things off on NotFest.com downbeat collaboration with a a reprint. You don't reprint, do you? A re-record. No, we haven't re-recorded it. This is going well. Professional. I'm a professional human being. Um, we are rehashing the V-Man episode as a little, like... You know, welcome to the club. This is a new collaboration that we're doing. And if you have already listened to this episode, hopefully this sort of me being funny right now, hopefully arguably funny, is worth your time as it is. If not, see you later. Just listen to something else. It's one of the other things on NotFest.com. If you don't know by now, NotFest.com is sort of expanding as a multimedia outlet for art, music, media, culture, anything to do with hard rock metal and in these times when we don't know when gigs are coming back it couldn't come at a better time um it's going to be fan based sort of artist first platform um by artists for artists that clown is on there doing chats with people he's doing something with um jamie from code orange you got another sort of I would say, is this competition? Mosh Talks with Bees? Sort of hard rock chat show. Um, which is kind of what I do. So Bees, you know, let's have some sort of charity boxing match, shall we? That'd be quite good. Um, and then there's going to be articles and interviews from loads of people. Already right now, if you're listening to this, you're on the website. So there's stuff up right now. Suicide Silence, August Burns Red, Testament, Black Dahlia. Um Mark from Periphery is doing his essential albums, and you've got playlist curation by Dino from Fear Factory. There's just a bunch of shit. And by shit, I mean cool shit, not bad shit. Um, if you're stuck indoors, which I hope you are, get on there and have a little look. Um, my guest, I would say this week, my guest on the podcast, mm, I guess it's this week, but it happened a while ago, is Alex Venturella from Slipknot. He plays the bass in Slipknot. He's a very good friend of mine. Both both of us being British fellows in US bands. Uh, we talked we talked about how on earth one goes from being a UK based guitar tech and guitarist to the bassist of one of, if not the biggest band in the world. Um, he made me a really nice dinner. I was blown away. It was like a, like an Italian as you'd guess from his namesake, like an Italian pasta dish. It was bloody gorgeous, I'll tell you that. Um, What else did we talk about? Just like cool tour stories. Generally had a good laugh. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I don't know when you're listening to this. You may be listening to this on the release date. You might be listening to this years from now. You might be listening to this 100 years from now and you're thinking, what's he talking about, global pandemic? And why does he sound as if he has hair? We've all evolved to not have any hair, and that affects our voices. Um, But if you are listening to it at any point when the World Wide Web exists, you can go to www.thedownbe.at, so it spells downbeat, uh, for other episodes of the podcast. Uh, Merch, hopefully there's still, still some merch there. It all sold out last time, but there's I think there's still some long sleeves depending on when you're listening to this, the shorts might be back. Who knows? Um, There's a donate button if you like what you're listening to, because I do this for free out of the kindness of my still beating heart. You could donate me a dollar. You might be Elon Musk, in which case you could donate me a million dollars and one of your nice electric cars. Anyway, it's time. 
Alex Venturella on the Downbeat Podcast on NotFest.com. Hello. Hi. <laughs> does, uh, does everyone in your band call you V-Man? Uh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No. That's it, not me starting with a question straight away, but I don't know if just all the good people from back in the day call you V-Man, or it's actually your nickname globally. Well, I think globally it's recognised. I think, well, the, when I was a kid, everyone called me V-Man, and I think it stuck. Even sometimes my mum and dad would call me V-Man. But with the band, I don't know, you probably get the odd Alex. But I mean, normally it's just a nod or a, a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, hang on, you said when you were a kid, people called you V-Man. Yeah. Like, how young? I don't know. Surely it should be V-Child. V-Child, no. I can't remember. V-Kid. I can't remember who the first was that said it, but it was definitely since I was really young. V-Man, though, at an age where you were a child. Okay, I mean, maybe like... Teens, still being called a man. Yeah, it must have been. Quite it's been good forever. For the... It's been forever. I always like find like an old email or something. And some every like, now and then, like I keep mix, mixing up, finishing with Alex or V Man, and someone's like, "What should I call you? Actually, V Man or Alex?" It's an it's then, an it's an absurd nickname. Yeah, and then I it, love it. Then when I was in the industry teching, then people would always be like, "Oh, how do you uh, want to be called?" I think I just got to the point. I was like, "Fuck it, it's just V man." Do you know what? Do you know architects used to call me when I first started working for architects? They used to call me Mini V man. Mini V. Because I had tattoos and I was a liability, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's why they started calling me that. It was like it was just like we got like V man's gone, and we've just got another one, but he's a drum tech. Yeah, Mini V. Yeah, that makes sense. It was good though. Yeah, was, I mean, back in the day, Tekken, that was. I did a lot of fuck ups at the beginning. But was what was good. the biggest fuck up you ever done? I don't know, it was like silly shit. I remember when I was with Charlie, when he was, he just finished doing Busted. I think we were doing like some festival with Fight Star somewhere in England. It was one of those weird Scottish ones where tea in the park or something like that. Do they still do that? I think the... so. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I feel like in that side of the music industry, there's always these festivals I never... I mean, once you're in the metal ones, you just concentrate on them. You never think that there's anything else apart from... What did you do with... What did you fuck up? You fuck up big on stage? Yeah, I think... So where is it? Tea in the Park. And we had all day, but I think I just dicked around and drank all the rider. This forgot is why they re- called me Mini V. Forgot to restring guitars. Panicked. Because I was like, oh, shit, can I do it in 10 minutes? <laughs> you know, shit went wrong, didn't, you know. But then I got, I think I got scolded for that one. So this but is... They never, oh, I never got fired. They, they gave me another chance. So this is what, I mean, this is probably about six or seven questions deep, but I'm just going to escalate it to now because it works. So we were both techs. Yep. Massively nerdy probably in our fields guitarist and drummer the nerdiest people we know in terms of like gear yeah so we naturally started out as techs but then also there's this sort of i must party and <laughs> yeah, i'm in the band but i'm not in the band mentality and eventually here we are in two bands yeah i mean obviously there's been a maturity I've got. I got more. Well, let's just say I got the the progression as being a professional tech came kind of quick because you were letting people down and that feeling was shitty. So it's I slowly learnt my lesson quick. So it wasn't you know I think you know. But there's those days where you're kind of oh I want to party with the band, but if I do that. I've got to be up really early to set up all their oh, gear. It's the worst, isn't it? It is the worst. The band can sleep in. Yeah, I mean, even like with Mastodon, I would pay Darren Sanders, who's now my tech. He's also one of my best mates. <coughs> I mean, I would, I'd give him my day's wage and I'd just sleep in my bunk till like <laughs> six really? o'clock, yeah. That's so fucking funny. Because <laughs> I was so hungover. 
So you go out partying with the band, yeah, and then you be you would pay. What did, what was his job? He was like stage manager, but he was also like Troy and Bill's tech stage left, and I was stage right. And you was, would just pay him. Yeah, I'd just be like, "There's hundred bucks or something." I'd be like, "I'm not getting up." And tour manager would be like, "Well." The job's getting done. Well, Brent would be like, I'm not going to, I don't give a fucking shit. Yeah, yeah he doesn't seem like day, when the band, I mean, I wouldn't get him to do like my actual gig, like in the sense of restringing like, my guitar. Yeah, he'd just do like loading and I'd turn up and be like, whoops. That's the dream. Yeah. But I mean, so that was like once every blue moon. So. It's all right. You're not, you don't have to go back to teching, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you, don't, you said that as if I like, actually I might need to go back to teching. Uh, you're in the biggest metal band in the world. Um, so, well, hang on, what's the, let's talk about the timeline. So there's... There might be a bit of a jumping around for stories because yeah. there's so many bloody stories. So there's V, v Child. V Child. And then V Child filled in for Viatrophy. Yes. When I wasn't in Viatrophy. No. But I went on that tour for some of it for Job for a Cowboy. Was it Job for a Cowboy? Job for a Cowboy. On, who were those weird kids that were following us around all the time? Do you remember them? Was that so blonde many. one that was always hanging around with Bailey. Granny. Granny, that's the <laughs> one. <laughs> they like smashed up some girls. <laughs> House. It was like some house party or something. Yeah, we didn't have anything to do with that. that no, was, we didn't. That was other people. That was other people. Um, so, and then there, so this is, we're still V Child at this point, mm. but the, I think that's how I got to know you. Yep. We're talking that's 2006. That tour was 2006. I think that's when we got, did we know each other but kind of before or not? I don't know. I, I think my, maybe from just being virtuoso musicians yeah, on like, myspace.com oh there's that fucking twat with that stupid guitar rig yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that's what i remember yeah it was it was like loading in to the king's tavern reading yeah. with your fucking massive flight case yeah like diesel diesels, fucking eight string guitars but this is what I, this is what i like when i do drum clinics and there's like a section of it where i talk about i do like a q a and it's yeah. always like how come you're in a band now? <laughs> like, how come you're in a band? And it was because I was the nerd with all the, like, yeah. even back then, like you were, turning up to play to three people with a full diesel rig and eight string guitar and yeah. like, just because you loved the equipment and you loved playing. Yeah. And then it gets to the point where word gets round. Yeah. Like, oh, who could, like, we needed a Well, I say we, but I wasn't in the band then. But I actually needed a guitarist. And yeah. it was like, well, who's that twat with the fucking massive rig? Because yeah. he obviously knows what he's doing. Well, I mean, I mean, but then again, there's a lot of people that with massive twat rigs that don't know what they're doing. I mean, oh, true. There's a lot of that. Now, massive twat rig is but then, like a again, real that's thing. like saying, well, who thinks that I'm the best? I mean, you know, I'm not. It's one of those. I don't know. I don't. I, I'd always spent a lot of money on gear. I didn't come from a rich family or anything like that. I mean, they did all right, but I'd always just keep selling. I'd always buy something and then sell something to get something better. And it would not, do you know what I mean? Del Boy. Well, yeah, Del, there's Del Boy music. I'd always, and I regret selling a bunch of shit, but you'd kind of go up and up and up and up the, you know, once you made a bit of money on a profit and a bit of gear, you'd buy a bit. Sell of a bit. Yeah. Get something better. And you must have sculled through drums like so crackers. Many, yeah. So many. And then drum you think kits. about those ones that you sold, and you're like, fucking, oh. why'd I do that? But yeah, no, and then, I don't know, yeah, I just always had silly gear, but that was also always because it sounded great. It wasn't because it looked crazy. And it was silly back then, but now your silly gear back then is now a normal local band opener, eight string guitar. Yeah, everyone's got fucking in ears playing in front of like 200 cap venues. I was like, I used All right, to. Let's take it down from 200. <laughs> let's say 50 cap. I'm playing some 200 caps, mate. <laughs> I mean, it's crackers. It's like, I don't know. I just, that's, uh, that's, I don't know. That's another topic completely, but. No, let's stay on the topic. I like no, but yeah, I mean, gear. The gear is one of those things that when we when we were growing up, we rehearsed in my parents' front room, and it was and it was a uh, disclaimer. By the way, this is uh, my dog making loads of fucking noise. Yeah, your dog's going nuts. Um, yeah, it was. You know, we didn't have any monitors or anything like that, so you'd have to kind of play as loud as you could to fight each other I, f I feel like when you play kind of like that you pick up a different technique 
or different style it's a different style but it's also i don't know like it's like motorhead if you gave them in ears you know if they were still around today i don't think they'd ever it'd be weird imagine that motorhead with a click yeah it'd just, <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be fucking shit we got right we've got main stage running Lemmy. Oh, Ab- Ableton Live. <laughs> A- Ableton's running for the light show. <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. So I grew up around that. So like when I first was in, you know, Slipknot, it was the first... Well, no, I had in ears before teching because it was like... Well, I'd only have like the guitar in there, so it wasn't like enjoyable. It wasn't like I was just had a fucking front of house mix going, oh, this is great. So Does Slipknot play to a click? No. Nothing? No songs? No songs to a click. We We did on the last album cycle start playing with the idea of set tempos and then starting the songs with a click and then but you know like, there's so much push and pull in the band that it's it, it's almost i feel like it would just be sterile it's oh, not that makes me feel really sorry for jay well it's, i mean it's just you know like when you listen to eyeless or something like that you know, like, nah, 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 nah. you know, it's like, oh, that is the right song, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just said a fart for a sec. Um, you know, like that, sometimes it can be like, nah, 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 nah. you know, like it could change whenever you want or however you feel like it. Or So I feel like if you had a click playing it, it would just sound fucking yeah, pants. But, yeah, for you, but for the drummer, that must be such a nightmare for it being different every night. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, that's just him. I think that's his style of drumming, that's his way of playing. and I think that's how Slipknot's always been. So. Have we talked about what I've done? I've talked about it on the podcast loads. but Me. Me? Um, yeah, hang on, me. Because <laughs> um, I wanted to play to a click, but yeah. we got the same thing. We got all these ups and downs. So I just w- recorded a whole set, Yeah. like with a GoPro, and then I programmed a click that goes, woo! <laughs> all over the fucking shop yeah so then i can practice at home what's going to happen on stage but it's not like 180 the whole way through it's like 180 this bar is at 170 this bar is at 182 it's a fucking nightmare it took forever yeah and i don't know if it's going to work yet because <laughs> i haven't tried it live yet well i mean dan lord ford in sixth you know he he does his is crackers he's got like one and a two and a three and a four, and he's like him talking, and he's like going one, two. Oh, before sections, yeah. But and like, and like, I'm like, how the, and especially playing, and he doesn't have any guitars in his ear or anything. It's just him, and a click track. So I don't know how. But then that's you know, people are different. That's weird, isn't yeah. it? Because that's like you're not even playing a show. Well, yeah, I feel like now he might have a little bit of guitar bleed, but I don't. I'm, when I was working for him or just being friends and hanging around with him from the beginning it was like no it was just him and a click track i had matt from periphery on here and he plays to a scratch guitar live really click and a scratch guitar none of what's actually happening but they all to click though because now nolly's not yeah the whole them. the so whole thing's got, to a click they got um but he's just playing a scratch yeah. guitar misha could be playing fucking happy birthday and he doesn't know <laughs> he wouldn't know. know i don't know i don't know i don't know about that but then again horses for courses i mean it's, uh, different strokes different strokes different strokes i went off piece then i was doing yeah, the timeline th- do these all just normally jump around oh everywhere? this fuck is the most unprofessional podcast in the world that's good Twenty thousand. Well, listeners. then you know it's genuine a month Hundred thirty-eight thousand <laughs> total you know if you if you're a maggot and you don't know who the fuck i am i'm gonna add something to the beginning of this which sort of promotes me more <laughs> <laughs> so i can sort of you know get some of you in to the downbeat podcast crew you know mm. buy a t-shirt or whatever and you'll L- get you'll get you'll also get a bunch of people going the bass player's english I still, oh yeah I, I get it all the time as well i still get that to this day they still don't know i'm english and then they're like the name alessandro are you italian i am italian and then they go but i mean but how do you practice as if fucking aeroplanes <laughs> don't exist. But whoa, whoa, whoa. The bassist is English. I do a lot. Then of, they don't practice. A lot of flying. People imagining Slipknot getting together every Saturday afternoon for a, <laughs> for a fucking practice. I'm through my parents' front room. <laughs> At your par- in your parents' front room. Do Everyone. You know, Brown V-mans, V-childs. I kind of would really love to do a small gig, though, with how we are. I think that would be amazing. What's the smallest gig you've played with Slipknot? I think it was in like Taipei, maybe. Yeah, it was in Taipei. 
and uh, I think um, it was only like 3,000 people. That's a small gig for you. I think it was free. I could be talking shit, but I'm pretty sure it was like a really small... Is only anything under like 10,000 to you small? Yeah, but then this is... I was having this conversation with my girlfriend the other day. Oh, got a girlfriend. Oh, love me. <laughs> um, if I don't have my glasses... Well, I, don't, I can't see once I take my glasses off, pretty much. So, like, all I can see is up until the security guards in the front row, pretty much, and the rest of the crowd just is a big blur. It's just, like, one. It's just a giant one of people. I can't Does that see. help for nerves or anything? Yeah, because I just walk on stage and I'm like... I'm playing this as security and... I just can't blob. see anything. So, and then obviously I've, you know, the lights and everything flashing around. Did you not think of maybe just sort of implementing oh, some glasses into your mask? I was thinking about that, but then I was like, it's like when you go paintball, it would just steam up and I'd be like, bugger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you could have done like gas mask style, but then made them prescription. Yeah. So you're not... We're, we're talking about Matt not play, He's playing the gu- guide guitars, no, but you're playing, to, you're playing to <laughs> nothing. You're playing to no eyes. No, I mean... It, it so who's really playing the show? We played a show the other day, and it was in Quebec, and it was quite light out, and I was just like, oh, fuck, look how many people. That's amazing. Oh, I could, see, could, I could see, kind of yeah. see that one. But, like, download, it was... Was that a festival? Was that Rock rock Fest or...? Yes, yeah, that was... Fucking wicked festival. That was a great festival, and, like, the crowd were nuts, and it was, like, the first time I'd really seen on this run a lot of, like... It's been dark pretty much most of the places. Can you just move that closer to your mouth? Just... You know how to use one of those. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh, hello. Keep talking. Dark. <laughs> it shows the dark. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I suppose there's, like, that adrenaline thing that I get, but I'm more worried about playing every note correctly. So I'm just so concentrating on playing everything that I'm like, da, 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 you know, it's, and if I, and my bass is so loud in my ears, but like not loud, like it's distorting. But. Is it hard to go? Cause I don't know. Cause I'm a fucking drummer. Is it hard to go? Cause you, you obviously before the child mm. was a guitarist. Yeah. Cry for silence. Yep. Great band. Dan, I, Mumf- I like to- Dan Mumford artwork before it was cool in at the, in at, in at the deep end was it in at the deep end records no, uh, 30 days vis- a night visible noise oh visible noise you were fucking you were on a big boy shit no they didn't really like our stuff we had to kind of like beg them to release it that was pretty sick, much though. but it, anyway I, you were a guitarist I was is it hard to play the bass if you're a guitarist or is it actually quite easy it depends how you approach the bass how yeah. do you approach the bass because I'd grown up with James from Sick. Oh, I love Sick, 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 Sick. <laughs> but because um, I've always been, he's been like my oldest mate, pretty much, with Steve and Lags and all them lot. Um, and he's a phenomenal bassist. He's just a ridiculous bass, probably the best me- metal bass player I've seen. I would agree. Yeah, I mean, it's Dave Ellison, he's pretty amazing, but he really is fucking nuts. He's Megadeth. <laughs> well, I don't know Megadeth, do I? Uh, Megadeth got a good bassist yeah he's fucking crackers is he sorry crackers by the way is crazy I don't not as the the American yeah yeah, way. yeah that would be weird <laughs> no yeah it's like yeah um, so I never knew that yeah has he's he always a, been with them yeah Dave Ellison should I just know who he is and I don't yeah he's a monster uh, there's a great videos on YouTube of him I think they're doing uh, I can't remember what the show is but like it's when Marty was still in the band so it was, that's a line up yeah and Nick Menzer on, on the old drums is he the guy that had the chains I can't remember he had someone in Megadeth one of the Megadeth drummers had his cymbal suspended by oh chains. yeah he had that yeah he had that's that. sick I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure it was him I feel like I know the Megadeth hits but I should delve deeper I, I mean, feel like I'd like it. Yeah. Tornado Souls is probably one of my favourite guitar solos of all time. That's how you got found out that you were in Slipknot, wasn't it? Because you're Megadeth. Megadeth on the, the and Some little nerd, whoever you are, <laughs> <laughs> listening to this, was like, whoa, that's actually. <laughs> I think it was probably someone that was in the industry because, you know, some tech must have said something. Probably like, Visible Noise <laughs> trying, trying to get back at you. <laughs> Uh, I think that relationship died way before I even went ventured into Slipknot. So, um, I've still I've, I've gone off. We went off piste. With Where were we? From, we were talking about periphery 
drum tracks live. Your eyes. My oh, eyes. Approaching the bass. Approaching, approaching the bass. Approaching the bass. Why? How do you approach the bass? This is a professional podcast, people. This is often number one in the music podcast. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So watching James play and all that stuff from my life, he just, you know, he uses a pick. Oh, picks are for losers. Well, they're not. They're great. And they sound they, better. They sound Even I know that from when I used to record bands. You know, you could spend all day playing metal with your fingers and it does sound great for certain things, but I want to play tight metal and play down picked and stuff like that you need the frequency from a bit of plastic a bit of plastic helps if you're playing as well doing in chopped in b is anyone like ever... drop a with your fingers just sort of sounds like a big is that what tuning and slip knots in yes yeah, so we've got drop a and we've got drop b you know that's low it's... has anyone ever tried <laughs> sorry if this is a redundant question has anyone ever tried like inventing something that... <laughs> do you know where i'm gonna go with this like a little <laughs> like little thimbles 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 for your hands but it means you play like play with your fingers but it sounds like a pick like if you just dipped your hands in a can <laughs> in candle wax do you know what i mean like it makes a little hard plastic and yeah. you can just flop them off over and you can go yeah well this is what we were talking about technique like the way See, we're back on subject back I know on subject doing. no but it's true the way that i approach and the same as james like he hits he picks really hard and what that does, the tonality, the, you know, it's just cuts through really well in the mix. If you play with a floppy pick down in B and you're going down picking and you're not really putting much effort in it, but you're compressing the shit out of it, it's just going to go pop, 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 pop. But if you're using like, you know, 0.88 or something like that, you know, if you want to use something else yeah, close. I know, I know what that means. I don't know about you listeners. <laughs> but, you know, and you hit that and you... Is 0.88 how thick it is? Yeah, yeah Good, the carry gauge. On. The gauge of the pick. Okay, carry you on. Know, you know, and you, the way you dig into it, it completely changes the tone. You know, that's why, why David Gilmore is such a fucking great guitar player is because he's got so many different dynamics of the way he plays but because i'm playing metal i'm not going to start dropping out into comfortably numb so it, imagine that imagine that do you yeah. reckon you'd get fired or do you reckon you'd get <laughs> you'd get seriously scolded because the logistics of firing you would be so much work but it's a really bad fuck up to do this like i don't well me, me me and clown always talk about pink floyd and how that's like our favorite in the world yeah, but i'm talking about like halfway through halfway through i don't know I like mean, spit it out i think jim would probably like it as well he'd probably join in or something probably get away with it yeah <laughs> well there's you know if that happens then if anyone ever sees that that's my fault <laughs> i've got once right Imagine, do you reckon people with Tourette's? Yeah. If, and if, if anyone's got Tourette's listening, who's a musician, do you reckon that could oh, happen? Yeah. Like you could be playing, spit it, it out by Slipknot, and then your Tourette's kicks in, and suddenly you play. You come wish to you be were numb. here. Also, yeah. Wish you were here. <laughs> Fuck me. Because I once, the only time in the world, well, the only time ever in my life, I was yeah. really hungover in Newbury. I was in the Kennett Centre, Newbury. Yeah. Right? It was 4.55 p.m. It was about to close. It was only me and this woman at opposite sides of the mall. Yeah. She, she dropped her keys, and for some reason, which has never happened before or since, I screamed, dropped your keys. Yeah. At her. Like, I just suddenly had Tourette's for a second. It's never happened before or since. Well, a funny, funny one. Uh, when I was 13... V-child. Uh, V-child at school. It was uh, Watford Boys Grammar School. If anyone's from Watford. Ooh. And uh, I was doing, like, a... Not a talent show, but, like, it was like... A, we had a little band that we put together. And I did some Nirvana covers. Nice. Yeah. And I played uh, the same solo in both songs, both different songs. So I'm not a very big Nirvana fan now, but I think it was... was there, is there solos in Nirvana songs? There was, yeah, it was... Dan, 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 dan. What's that one? <laughs> yeah, that solo. Yeah. You I, played that over... I played that else. in... Come as, the, the, doom, 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 doom. Uh, yeah, it would work. And I played the solo in that. Twi- so I played the same solo twice in two different songs. 
Now, would you be fired if you paid that <laughs> <laughs> at like not fest? <laughs> In front of I, well, 60, we've got, people. The only bass solo I've got is in a track AOV off the last record. And the last time, oh no, when was it? There's the one when I ate shit on stage. I had a. Yeah, when you fucking had a fit. I had a fit. No, it was um, severe dehydration. Everyone was like, oof. How I just was. I wasn't looking after myself. And we did, did a. It was like all these hot amphitheaters and me being. It was one of your first tours, wasn't it? Yeah, kind of. Well, was it? Yeah, kind of. By much. that, I mean like first couple of years. We, I started doing like working out and gym in the back of the trucks and all that stuff and cutting carbs, like clever stuff. And I also like sticking my head in the fire. So I think my body kind of like did a little shutdown whilst I was playing the silo actually of AOV. And if whoever, some clever clogs can find a video of yeah, me I think online I've seen the video it's, cause it's, I was worried about my friend yeah my tech at the time Dave he said to me he was like it sounded like someone gave your bass to a child and <laughs> threw him down the staircase and I was like oh okay and I've been trying to find that clip so if anyone so what happened did you just like start freezing up yeah just, the clip exists I've definitely seen it yeah the, the hands start like it was weird I thought I was having a heart attack so probably there was a bit of panic in there as well yeah which added to the stress of the also dehydration in front of so many people like yeah it, I, I always say this when you know when someone dies on stage like i think that exploited drummer died on stage or something and everyone's like oh at least he died doing what he loves being fucking terrified and embarrassed no <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. if i have a heart attack on stage let it be known that is not doing what i loved because yeah. i wasn't playing the drums at the moment i died i was freaking out about am i dying yeah i mean every show to me is i don't like walk on stage and go this is a breeze do you know what i mean it's like every show is you get off and i'm like straight away to the front house guy goes how was that how did it how was you know so it's, it's, it, do you know what i mean it's like every night is stressful so I can imagine, like, my head was just like, I'm fucking up. I'm playing all the notes wrong. And it was early. In, and in and it was, like, four songs in as well. And then, yeah, he just said, you sound like you just got thrown down a staircase. Wow. That was it. You went to hospital, hospital and they said you got dehydration. Severe dehydration. They said... Uh, Drink more coconut water. Four, no, I was... That, that, that was a problem. The coconut water. Too I wasn't, much potassium. I wasn't putting enough... Uh, actual water oh really yeah so you know like pedialyte and stuff like that yeah. now i take pedialyte quite a lot but i've noticed even now doing so much pedialyte oh, sounds like a drug <laughs> sounds worse than a drug <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that it's like that's not good for you do you know what i mean so there's you just drink water that's the just thing drink just water. drink fucking water all day and then i just take a sachet of pedialyte and then that just... Because the set must be, what, hour and a half, two hours? Yeah, an hour and 40 minutes, I think. In a mask. In a mask, a boiler suit. In a fucking suit. boiler suit. Yeah. Playing, I, yeah. rocking, and you're walking through fire, because I saw that the other day at Download. I did a bit of fire. You literally I mean, just walked through it. Well, I mean, it's it's touchy. It's, I can feel it spitting on the back of my head, like the fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Safe. <laughs> Yeah, but it's Are like, the masks fire retardant? Well, the last one's fire retardant on the, the last record, but now I've got my own one. That's not fire retardant. And I always keep getting warned that if you caught up in fire, that, that it would melt to your face. <laughs> wow, okay. So that's a bit worse than dehydration. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to the mask later because I do want to talk about that. But, um, so we're still on the timeline. V-Child. Cry for Silence. You're a guitarist. Yeah, guitarist. Good. That's why. Check I... out Cry for Silence if it's on Spotify or whatever because it is sick. And V Man played the guitar and wrote it. Who else was in it? Steve did a lot of. I was kind of like the. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Steve it, Sears, producer. Steve Sears did. He's done some gallows. He's gallows. done. You know, he's he's a great, lovely guy. Lovely guy. Very, very talented. Very he's talented. In, always in uh, Gold Key. Check him out if you like a bit of chilled music it's very radio heady vibes radio heady it's good um yeah cry for silence there's one track i, I need to check what it's called because i don't want to send people down a down the wrong path to finding it so let me just type it in am i allowed to type 
You can type. It's already dead air. So it's dead air. Oh. The typing, ideally with keypad tones on, so people know that's actually happening. Okay. What's so the song? The the album's called The Glorious Dead, and the song is called Beneath the Storm, and it's an instrumental because I didn't really like our singer, so I, that was like my favourite track Your already. Favourite track, yeah. But Dan Mumford artwork. Dan Mumford. Dan Mumford artwork. Legend. Yeah, he's he's a great artist. Um, but yeah, I mean, when was that? When did that come out? That came out... Oof, 2008. Right, and then you Guitar Tech for Architects, correct? From there? No. I went to... No, who did I... I was doing like local, like gallows and stuff like that yeah. and all that. And then, But I knew Architects from touring with Sixth and I was like that at first like Tom was like who the fuck is this cunt sitting in the corner of the stage shredding and like he's not even in the band and I remember the first couple of weeks they were just like fuck not a couple of weeks couple of days they were like fucking idiot and then at the end of it we were best mates but that was uh, <laughs> that's how people feel about me as well <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck was this guy yeah it was the same I was sound checking Dan's kit and I was just shredding on it it was like <laughs> if I remember Dave Witt is that how you say his name? The guy from Municipal Waste? Yeah, yeah. I know and Burned by the Sun. Yeah. Fucking amazing drummer. Right, so he, when I was sound checking Dan's kit once at some festival, he went up to Dan thinking Dan was my tech. I was like, oh, what, ba- <laughs> what band's this? <laughs> Just fucking being the techs that shred on stuff. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So then you did Architects. Did Architects. I mean, the order is very vague right we're now loose, we're, we're getting loosely a loose, a, a loose leaf tea then i did a bit of sick f- properly not ju- yeah not just getting pissed and hanging around uh but by I- this point to, to outsiders like me yeah. it was very weird how the best possibly possibly joint best with josh Mirren guitarist that i know doesn't really have a band and it was almost annoying. Just tech. I think, yeah, because I just got, it's not, I got fed up with my band. I was just like, I can make money and I like fixing shit. And so I went down that path of learning how to fix shit. So it wasn't just like, oh, watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to refret a guitar. Like I, t- I studied how to do it. And then, I don't know, I just felt, I didn't mind because I kept practicing. I was always that twat. They're like, why has the fucking tech got a Steinberger? That's kind of like how I met Jim in Slipknot as well. Because they were like, "Come on, we're getting to that. We're getting, we're to, getting that. to that. We're getting to that. We're getting to that. I want to build a nice sort building of building into people it. People are there. V Child. It's 2008. <laughs> right? You're doing Architects, and then I did Architects after you. I think I did the first tour after you'd quit or something. Yeah. Um, then you went. From, did you go from Architects to Mastodon? No, I think I went to. Was Gallows already? I don't know. Gallows was big around then, so maybe. Because after, after that, I did Gallows, or maybe I was, at the same time, I was either doing both. And then Gallows did Grey Britain. Yeah. And then during Grey Britain, I sold all my eight strings to fund partying. That was actual. Nice. So some shitheads got like loads of black machine eight strings fuck me they'd be worth like 20 grand now. i found my insurance thing in my drawer when i was cleaning up my drawer the other day when i came home and it was like 10 grand with all the black yeah. machines yeah yeah all the eight string fan frets and all that city so shit. how'd you meet mastodon so i no, i've got a, it's got to involve slipknot now so Slipknot gets involved here. Yeah, Slipknot gets involved here. So Plot I, twist. well, I've known Jim for a while, probably actually from 2008. And yes, I did. No, okay, so we were doing Gallows, Great Britain. Halfway through Great Britain, I got a message from a guy called. Oh, what's his fucking name? Johnny, Johnny, he was the manager of my band and I've forgotten his bloody name. Anyway, from Wales, Johnny Phillips. There you go. Name rings a bell. Yeah, he worked for SJM. I'm sure I know the guy. Yeah. So he he rang me up and was like, hey, can you 
tech Coed and Cambria because they were doing four nights at the Astoria in London. Chris Penny Coed and Cambria. Chris Penny Coed and Pam. Yeah, that's that's my favourite era. But, Chris Penny, anything Chris Penny does is my favourite era. He's a good friend and he's a fucking monster drummer. He's Probably a good friend from this moment. From we're about this moment to talk in about. time, yeah. Let's go then. <clears throat> so it was the fourth day, and some guy outside was doing construction work. The Astoria on one of those, you know, the diggers. A pneumatic drill. Pneumatic drill. He went through the mains and died. The guy actually wow. died, I believe. And anyway, so the show got postponed that night and then it got moved the next day. Now, the next day was like Kevin Allen, who was actually later on, who's a good friend of mine, a tech, he became mixed tech, Mick Thompson's tech from the last album cycle. Very good friend of mine. He had to go to Australia to do a show. So he left. So I got called in to fill in. So I didn't know anyone in the band. Got there and uh, I got sat down and like, right, don't fucking change anything. Don't be a rock star and fucking think you can fix everything. You know what I'm like. Yeah, you tried to fix something. Oh, yeah. So there's this fucking ground hum <laughs> on all the rigs. And I was just like, this sounds like shit. So anyway, they all fucked off. I went and did This a is Coheed. Coheed, yeah. yeah. And I did a little bit of digging around. Got rid of all the ground hums. Fixed a few things with some of the guitars. Sorry, Kevin Allen. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, I got a call like a week later saying, hey, can you come and tech for us in the States? You did a great job. Uh, it's, on great the, job. it's on the Slipknot tour. And I was like, here Jack of go. fucking Nakanori. Yeah, here we Upgrade. go. Upgrade. In, so, <laughs> in 2000, Ooh, 2008, this is. 2008, then. 2009, it was the All Hope Is Gone tour. And uh, got, got, they got me an O one visa. Nice. For one tour? For one tour. Is the O1 the one that lasts for three years? Yes. Wish and, I am. You know, I've got all my music shit. So, I, you know, I studied music and all that stuff. And I've got my... Oh, I've got, oh he's got... He's got... Oh, he's got his... You got a degree? I've got, I got stuff. you got a degree in music? <laughs> i got my piano stuff. So... <sighs> so you're on that tour? Yeah, we're on that tour. And then... Uh, setting up one day... And then what I would do is I'd get all the shit done and then I'd wheel all the, the, you know, the rigs in place and stuff. And then everyone's just like fucking around waiting. So I'd grab one of Claudio's guitars and he just let me like shred on it and noodle away. So I was just sitting there going, did all my little... And then, you know, Jim was like, fuck is that? I was like, oh, hey, whatever, chatting. And then literally it was like a week later, he's like, do you want a guitar? And I was like, what? And he's like, we haven't got a guitar out here and... I can see you shredding away. I'll give you a guitar. So he goes off in his rack and he just gives me one of his like prototypey kind of telly tellies. That's and he, nice. And yeah, and he goes, there you go. And he goes, oh, I've got a case for you at the moment. I'll get it soon. And I was like, so I kept it like, it's like my little thing. It's I was like, stay the it. fuck away from it. It's my guitar. <laughs> like a dog with his dog, dog toy. This is my pint of bitter. That's fucking nice of him. Yeah, so... And then we just, you know, and, you know, I played in like my band and shit. And then it came back to, he actually saw my band years and years ago. And this is a story that I want to release later on. I'm not going to tell anyone about it, but there's uh, something that involved MTV and myself, which involved Slipknot back when I was like 18. But right, but you're not going to tell the story. I'm not going to tell the story, no, because I'm, I'm not going to, I want people to watch the video. Because there's a fucking cassette, and I'm gonna try and find it. Oh, so yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'm so, so once I find the cassette, then I'm gonna make it public. But anyway, I can imagine this is something to do with MTV Two or something. It would no, I mean it's quite old, but anyway. And he went and see he saw Crab Science at the Underworld like years and years ago, so it was kind of cool. So anyway, we would hang out, we'd chat, talk about music, and he's got a massive love for like. British like the Blurs and the, the Oasis and stuff like that so we had a lot in common and that was it I mean and, and we just kind of stayed in contact and you know that kind of like started the kick the ball in motion well not really I mean because it was well, no because then you're in the back of the, their mind yeah I suppose it was just, oh there's that guy of, you know well that, you know and that's how later on in life it was I then went on to do I finished off with co for like 
couple of tours after that, maybe maybe a couple of years we did. And then uh, Mastodon, they saw me, I was teching, I, I built these like crazy rigs for Travis and Claudio. And it was like a 20 year rack full of pedals. And I would do all their fucking twisting all the controls and like one of them had a chaos pad in there and like oh, yeah. and solos and all that you know so it was that mastodon saw me at that and then that kind of pushed me over into that camp you know what i mean so it was and then it's quite important to note that your relationship with jim mm. was a hundred percent natural because you were you had stuff in common yeah. And that was like, because you get some people that might want to get into a band or whatever, that when they meet Jim Root or whoever, yeah. would be like just agreeing with everything they say or trying to have something in common, but you actually had something in common. Yeah. And I always like to say, like talk about on the podcast or whatever, don't try and fake a relationship because it's well, not going to last. If you've got a genuine connection with someone, yeah. it might be, what, was it five years later that you ended up in Slipknot? Yeah. Because you had an honest connection. Yeah, I mean, even like now in the band and that, I am who I am and I don't, if someone doesn't agree with what I say, I'm not going to go, oh, okay. Like, yeah. It's not. I am like, I don't want to say alpha male or anything like that, but the way that I am is I stand my ground with things. If I see a different opinion or whatever like that, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I just, that's it. This is me. This is how I... This. Is there a funny story about you and Mastodon? About There's loads of funny stories. No, but I mean, when you first started work, working for them, I'm sure oh, there's a story about you nearly getting sacked on day one or oh, something. Oh, yeah, Brent, Brent got me fucking... He would not let me sleep. We stayed up to like 10.30 in the morning. And he was like, keep drinking, keep drinking. And I was like, oh, I can't drink anymore. Like, I need to go to bed. And like, but then that day, like, he just got fucking, he was, he was on fire. And I think he said something to me. Or I was like, and it got funky and like, fuck yes. you. And I just said, I just stood my ground and I said, this is what's up, whatever. And, you know, me and him were like fucking best mates. I do, I love it. But you initially I, had a fight. No, I mean, we've always had, uh, like, our uh, uh, different things. It wasn't like, I've never, we never, like, it's never been, like, nasty or vicious or whatever. It's just... Just a couple of big personalities on one bus. It's, it, that's the thing. It's just personalities, and it's two different people, the way you approach things and the way they're different. You know, we'd stay up all night, and I'd be fucking, well, I'd want to listen to Metallica, or I want to listen to Pet Shop Boys, but he wants to listen to country music. Do you know what I mean? It's an argument. It's there, an argument. There, yeah. <laughs> but it does, you know, and it's it's the way that you deal with things, the way that you are. And even though I was getting paid to be a tech to be with them, I'd still be like, "Fuck you" or whatever. It's like, but that's why we're friends because I'm my, I am how I am. Yeah, and you probably, without knowing it, you being who you are, meant you missed out on certain opportunities earlier on but they wouldn't have been right for you anyway. Do you know what I mean? If you'd have like, No, for sure, yeah. If you'd have met someone, let's say someone that we won't talk about them or whatever, but if you'd have met someone that you didn't really get on with, but even if they were in a band, you could have been the guy that's like, oh, really nice to them, and yeah. you end up working with them for a million years, even though you hate them, then you never join Slipknot. Yeah. Always be yourself. All right. You should always be yourself. It's, uh, it's the only person you can be really. well no for sure but you know I, it's a big industry I've met a lot of fucking people and you can tell a faker I can spot a fucking moron a mile away yeah and it's just and a it's networker all, it, oh I love a network someone that's just like oh we should we should connect sometime like immediately it's, you it's, don't care about me you just want a stepping stone yeah and it, it's music I get it it's a fucking job for some people but for me I love it passionate every night I fucking play I've never like, you know, we always have the little joke like, oh, my back hurts or oh, it's going to be a tough one. Not, yeah, sure. Fucking we're human beings. But. Was the, it hard? I mean, at, yeah, I mean, I'm not the most athletic human being on the planet. So, yeah, it does. To go from 
to go cry from, from cry for silence <laughs> and holding guitars for other people yeah. to playing for an hour and 40 minutes in a full fucking suit going yeah. nuts I mean I mean, the, obviously it was you got fucking hospitalized yeah but I mean it's, you know when you see someone like Ben Wyman like I love Ben he's fucking great and I watch him and I'm like how the fuck do you do that and still and play. Still play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, that's just, that's just, I think it's genetics. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But he doesn't have a mask on. No, Pop he ben doesn't. Ben Wyman in the mask. No, but. He's and we'll st- see. He's still, I'll be, I've been watching his suicide, suicidal. Uh, he's in them now, right? Yeah, he's, he's not yeah. just playing for a laugh. No, I think he's like fully in them, yeah. That's interesting. And, and I watch him still in that. And I'm like, fucking hell. Is he going as nuts as Dillinger? He goes pretty crazy. Yeah, because he was in he was in Prodigy, and I think he went too crazy for them. So that's fucking <laughs> sick. Um, is that all he's doing music wise? I believe so. If anyone doesn't know, Ben Wyman is the brain of the Dillinger Escape Plan. Which uh, I talk about Dillinger on the podcast all the time. So yeah, they're really good. Ben, him. Calculate Infinity. It's probably one of my favourites. Do you know what I found? I went to my parents' house the other day, and I found. Two perfect condition 1999. It might have actually been 2000. No, it was late 1999. Calculating Infinity Tour posters. A1. Perfect condition. I was like, fuck, I forgot I had them. And then I remembered how fucking old I am. I just remember hearing them and going, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I walked past <laughs> them playing Reading Festival and I was like, what the fuck is this? It's the best thing I've ever heard. I don't know what's going on. And then he shit in a towel and threw it in the stage. Yes, I was at that show. That was like the first time I'd ever heard of. I was just like, this guy's brave. I didn't understand it. I was like, I don't understand it, but it's the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I'm sure there's bands out there that are very extreme, but I kind of oh, I'm old now, oh, I don't like new music, but I kind of miss a lot of some what bands could get away with back then. I think now we're... If you shit on a town now, if you shit on a town immediately cancelled. Yeah, <laughs> I used to work for Watain for a bit. Oh, yeah, they had some brains. And they, uh, I mean, when I was working for them, that was... I was... Th- I, some days I felt like just leaving, but I mean, the blood... Throwing bloods, pig's blood on the... Crowd. Well, human blood as well was what? Yeah, I mean, some kids they were saying would kind of give them like would come to shows and give them their own blood. I'm like, yeah, fucked. But I mean, I don't know if that ever made it into the crowd or whatever. But it definitely did. I'm sure. <laughs> That's a massive hygiene issue for me. Yeah, <laughs> getting sprayed with some random's blood. I mean, I don't want that stuff, and I'm sorry if people think I'm telling secrets of people's stuff. But I mean, just that's not really a secret. We're pretty, mo- they, we know they're pretty evil. Yeah, didn't they have? They've never washed their stage clothes. Yeah, so they had this big flight case just full, the stinky box. Yeah, yeah about and this. like the moment it would go in the venue, I was just like, and I refused to pick it up. I was just like, I'm here to re- restring guitars and fucking clean shit. I I even bought myself like a little butcher's apron as well just so you fit in and I'd have to wear tattoo gloves just in case I didn't get fucking disease or something wow they got some riffs though they were great fun yeah I can't remember if they were in trouble for anything so I'm sort of no I mean they, they drank, you never know with blackmail they drank quite a lot and they were very serious I went to their like HQ in, in Sweden it was like this I think it was like on a train line or something but it was like one of those fucking side rooms underneath a train yeah, I mean, of it, course. You, yeah, it, and it was like they turned it into their, like their black metal bar as well. So like they'd have parties in there, and it just stank. It just stank of like metal. Like <laughs> <laughs> it smelled like, uh, it's, like you couldn't be any more metal about what that band was about. And that's fucking cool. I thought it was great, and add a bit of pyro to it when they did the bigger shows. It was fucking cool. Are but, they, they're still going, aren't they? They are still going. Yeah. Never, I wonder if they'll do a sort of behemoth style resurgence because behemoth are so fucking big now but yeah I, but they've been going forever i saw them they were on a few of our shows that we were doing at all the festivals across uh, this this uh euro fest and the, the cool thing about them other than the fact that they haven't been cancelled which is a bonus in black metal uh they've gone more black metal now even though they're bigger there's like the first sort of three or four albums that were super black metal and then they went like Black and Death like yeah. Demigod amazing album and is then that, now what's the, is that what's what yeah. that one yeah no that's the one after that's uh, Evangelion but that's, that's the like, one yeah, that's yeah. like 
pretty death metal as well. And then now they're like back to black metal, but they're fucking huge. I like it. I'm here for it. I saw they're wearing masks as well. Yeah, is it for the whole show or is it just... I think it's just the first song, but I was like, oh, masks. Which brings me to my next point. Let's talk about the mask, (laughs) okay? So, Jim Carrey, Cameron Diaz, did you design it? Was it your (laughs) choice for it to be green? No. Did you design your new mask? Uh, I designed it with a guy called Richie Beckett. He's a friend of mine. Is it Richie Beckett? Yeah, Richie Beckett. We're Who, shouting out the whole of the UK right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Richie did uh, Shape by Fate, which Cry for Science used to play around with back in the day. I auditioned for Shape by Fate. Did you? And I got it, but it was at the same time Viatrophy needed a drummer, and I picked Viatrophy. Well, you wanted the... To- wanted to blast yeah. yeah and also shaped by fate exploded like imploded not long afterwards yeah but they were wicked yeah no i mean it was it was weird because he his appearance changed quite a lot and so i remember like bumping into him at like a mastodon show because he was doing some mastodon artwork and i was like oh, that's richie and he's like oh we used to play bands together and i was like oh fuck i've done it again because you know you, yeah I, I've, it's not like i don't care i just forgot you just I meet just, five I, billion people a year yeah so, and then I was like, fuck, no way, shaped by fate. And then we started reminiscing of all the shitty venues that we played and like Club Eye for Back and all that shit. They had a residency there, I think. Yeah, Club Eye for Back with an 8 by 10 up that fucking staircase. Was, with your rig up that staircase. Yeah, everyone hated me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, we co designed that. Um, obviously, he did the design, the, the drawing. I'm not really much of an artist in that respect. And then someone else made it out of his Yeah, drawing. and then there's like a company that the band would use to, wicked. to, to produce the, the, the... But I've now got to that point where I love it, but now seeing it... Look, you know, there's all very well designing something and then you put it out and you're like, oh, there you go, the whole world's going to see it. You know, you get the odd comment, someone might say, oh, yeah, it's uh, sparkly red or I don't like that or whatever, but I love it. I think it's great. But then... I, you know, I saw this gold, the gold, and I was like, I like gold now, and the gold works. You know what I mean? And then it's like that works better, and that's something that, you know, it's like with everything. Bruce, you trying to have a chat here, mate? That's my dog. Being, Sorry. Oh, he's going to come over to have a chat. You were on a roll there. Yeah. Bruce has ruined it, and then I've sort of vicariously ruined it. Um, yeah. So. Uh, gold mask. Gold mask. So yeah, and then you see photos and you see how it looks live and stuff like that. And then now you can change things or you can mutate it or do whatever you want. And I, you know, coming out the bat with something awesome, which I think I have, you know, I think it's great. I love it. Um, I it's wicked. It, yeah, and thank you. And it's, it's right on the front cover of Metal Hammer today. Yeah, I saw that. It looks great. Got your in ears in. I noticed that. I know, because we were just about to come fucking stage. Really? Yeah. I wondered that. I was like, is that an endorsement thing or is that literally No, I was like, the guy was like, photo now. And I was like, oh, I got me in here. Do you want me to take him out? He's like, nah, don't worry about it. And I was like, cool. It does look, because they're just black, it looks a bit Well, no, like, they're geometric. You can see the geometric pattern. I didn't see, I didn't look close enough on that. I did. <laughs> trying to buy donuts. Just saw your face in the magazine. I was oh, in well, I was in the shop. Yeah, come out today, I think. Oh, I should probably buy that. Your mum will buy it. Is your mum like my mum? Yeah, she does. She watches all the YouTube videos. She's like, someone said this about you. Yeah, I'll get a text (laughs) from my mum like when I'm on tour. It's like, oh, I watched watched the show at Jackpot. (laughs) 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 All right. Jesus. No, yeah, mask. No, it's been been good. I get a lot of positive comments. There's some negative ones, but... That's just the internet. That's just the internet. You you, but then again, you can't like everything and everyone's got an opinion to a certain... <laughs> True, yeah, but you you couldn't... It's cure, like if anyone thinks Beethoven's shit, you're an idiot. So. You couldn't cure a disease and post about it on the internet because someone would be like, well, actually, <laughs> well, actually, that disease is a bit overpopulation about that. Um, <laughs> let's do some talking about Slipknot because I imagine, although, you know, I've got a bunch of listeners, but... I'm going to get the maggots on yeah. here and the maggots will be like, I don't give a fuck about the late, early to late 2000s Reading and London metal scene. I yeah. want to know about we are not your kind. Yeah. And I want to know like, is it good? 
<laughs> no. Um, only one single that I've heard thus far. Yeah. Unsainted. Everyone who's listened to this already knows they've listened to that song, so I don't have to go, oh, oh, I find the breakdown was very good. Which yeah. is, it is very good. But let's talk about the recording process. Okay. Because it interests me because Slipknot's the biggest metal band in the world. I, I want to know. Metallica. Metallica up there as well. I'd yeah, say. but if you think about... Ramstein are doing really well. I really love that new Ramstein record. It's fucking unbelievable. It's so isn't good. It? And the video is just amazing. My me and my wife well, my wife hates it because she thinks I'm joking. But I think Deutschland might be one of the best songs ever written by a human being. It, I can't stop listening to it, especially when I'm going really fast in the car. Like I like to put on some Ramstein. Do you know when I listen to Ramstein? What? In the shower, every day. In the shower? In the shower. And I fucking march around like I'm the synth player. <laughs> <laughs> I got the shower going and it's like, and I'm like pretending I'm on a wobbly synth and stuff. I like that one in radio, radio. That sounds like <laughs> a video video game. It's nuts. I worked it out on the piano and I was just like, that's a fucking. I would, you know, that's a the little gap for the little man. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It's almost funny, which again I like. Anyway, recording process. Recording process was. I just want to know, is it the same? Because if you don't play to a click live, I'm thinking, is there a very old school vibe? Do you get together and have a jam or is it demos? Well, the last record was, you know, I turned up there. Oh, we didn't really do how I got into the band, did we? Didn't we? I thought that was done. No, that's how I I've became friends with Jim Root. Oh, fuck, yeah, you should probably finish that bit off before we do this bit. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. Uh, right. Yeah, so, hold on. What happened? Mastodon, blah, blah, blah. Did all that. And then I was in... We just got back from Australia doing Soundwave. And uh, I think that was like my eighth Soundwave. That was a f- fucking... R.I.P. Soundwave. Yeah. Well, I, I headlined the last one. So imagine that. Teched eight of them, headlined the last of one. That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah. We did... Uh, got back from that. I was in Atlanta. I was living with Darren. And Darren Sanders, my tech, who's also Troy's brother. Uh, I got a call from Jim at like three in the morning. I think we was all hanging out on the porch and uh, it was Jim and he said do you know any bass players and I was like yeah what band and he was like you know what band and I was like what Stone Sour he goes no the other one and I said I'll do it <laughs> that was yeah, it of course you did and he's like well do you know any other bass players I was like no I'll do it I think he's documented he's got the actual whole conversation thing still on whhatsapp yeah there's no way i'm giving you a suggestion when I, if yeah. i know i can do something yeah I, knew I, fucking, I was like i fucking smash this easily yeah so he was like all right learn four songs someone will get in contact with you someone did book me a flight and i stayed up till fucking what? eight o'clock in the morning every day what four songs do you remember well i didn't do four songs i oh, went and learned did. more oh of course <laughs> you did little nerdy boy yeah so I look for every video, fucking kids playing it, stuff like you that. You would, though, if it's Slipknot. It's a Slipknot audition. I mean, I really, like, dissected every... watched as much stuff as I could, like, freeze-frame stuff and checking frets and stuff. Slowed it down on apps and, you know... I, I respect this. I, you know, I really fucking tried to go for my best. So anyway, I, I asked Troy if he could lend me his bass, and he lent me this Zon bass of his. Got on a flight... Got there, got to the audition, saw Jim, was like, hey man, good to see you, man, it's been ages, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, so I'm sitting in, standing in the, the studio and I'm like playing through the rig, they're like, right, to dial in a sound that you want. And I think I had like some old AD orange head and a, uh, what was that, Ampeg 8x10. I believe it's the one that I still use on the records today. And then uh, 
I was like, this sounds like shit. Can I get blaming an- his tools? Can I get yeah. <laughs> can I get another head? And they were like, <sighs> so they hired a Mesa Boogie four hundred plus for me, which took like an hour and a half. So I'm already like probably You're annoying. Already a fucking I'm already diva, diva, princess, yeah. the child. And then I was like, I'm not really hearing the kick drums enough. So then they got in some wedges for me <laughs> to get the drums through. And at that point, I could imagine everyone just being like, who the Is f- this a practice, though? It was, this it's not recording. Track? This was to audition. Yeah, but is there a band playing? There's a band, and the band's waiting for me. And Jay is in at this Jay's point. Jay's in there. Yeah. Jay's a done deal at this point. I'm not too sure at that point interesting and then you're being a diva I was being a diva then they got some brown w- M&M's only yeah they got wedges in for me and then I was like fucking kick drums through you know and I'm like yeah I'm ready to go and they're like you could just see people like who the fuck is this cunt nice but that's been your whole thing bro. that's always been me <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is yeah he is good <laughs> I don't know I'm not going to say that but um, yeah and then I just picked all the fucking brutal ones you know What'd you pick? Uh, Eeyore. It's <laughs> a fucking brutal one. I can't remember the exact songs, I'll be honest, but I'm pretty sure, you know, it was uh, it was a good mix of solid double pedals and, you know, riffs, you know, like the workout stuff, the stuff that when they come up in the set, you go to a hospital. band would be like, oh, you're dehydrated. You know. So... <laughs> And I fucking just down picked as much as I could, fucking just, you know, steamrolled through. Where it. was this? Uh, this was at uh, Sunset Sound on uh, in, LA. in LA, yeah, in Prince's room actually, and that's where we've been. We did some demoing there for the new record and that. So. Nice, right? So that's how you joined Slipknot. Okay, yeah. so right, hang on. Got that went, out of the way. Did they go? Yeah, right. Was it really it was a anticlimactic? Weeks. No, everyone was like, all right, we'll keep you around. So then what I did is, because I don't know, it's probably, I felt a bit bad because I left, you know, Mastodon, just like, whatever. I flew back and they were like, why are you flying back? And I was like, I just need to do something. And I went back, took it, took as many of them I could out for lunch, said, thanks for having me and all that. I'm going to be doing this. Picked up some of my bits and bobs. I, they were going to ship it. Well, I was like, whatever, I'll just go over there and... And then Brent drove me to the airport, but then he pretended that his car broke down on the motorway. He pretended? He pretended, then he got his gas tank out. Oh, that's loads of cars on the freeway trying to get past. I've got the video of it, by the Why way. Is he if doing anyone this? goes on my Instagram, Why you can did he find do that? said video. Why did he do it? Because <laughs> he thought it was funny. That is funny. <laughs> it is hilarious. I love that video. Um, but anyway, I managed to get there in time just by a scrape of, you know, I was like, whoa, fuck. Oh, shit. So you were trying to get back. I was trying to get back to the airport. So hang on. Do you know you're in by now? Yeah, they've said that, like, we're going to... How did that happen? Phone call? It was... No, we was sitting outside the house. We had this big mansion with everyone staying in it. Me, Clown, were sitting outside on a... And Jim. I think a few others. I don't think Corey... No, Corey wasn't there. And then he was... He, Clown said, right, do you want to do, do this? And that was it. And you said no. I said and no. Here we are. <laughs> I'm going to go back to Crab for Silence. Fucking hell. It's, do you know what? I forget, because obviously we're mates. We've yeah. been mates for a while. But then even this morning, I was in the gym, busy fucking dislocating my shoulder or whatever I've done. Mm. And fucking Wait and Bleed comes on in the gym. And a couple of boys behind the fucking thing at the gym are talking about it, talking about Slipknot. And I was like, you're in Slipknot. <laughs> That's mental. And I was like, I'm going to interview the bassist of this band right now and there's two people over there. Chatting about it. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, every like even for me, like I'll see stuff and I'm like, oh yeah, shit, I, I do that, don't I? Is it still weird? It's, it's not like weird like I'm like a schoolgirl about it, but it's... I'm, I'm still like every time I see something, I'm like, oh wow, fucking, that's nuts, isn't it? So I'm always forever grateful, shall I say. Yeah, it's fucking cool. I, I, I'll never forget. I'm sure he's forgotten this. But when I came to see you for the first time in 2013, I think it was. Oh, where was that? Nottingham Motorpoint Arena. 
Oh, yeah. I remember that. Maybe your first UK Slipknot thing before download or something. I can't remember. But we went and had a look because you've got a little jam room where you all jam. Oh, yeah, that's me, right. Me and you had a little jam. And then Jim... Jim popped walked, in. Popped in, picks up his guitar. Like, start, having, start having... I always think about this. He probably can't even remember it. We started having a little jam, me, you and Jim, which is fucking... You know, to me, that's like insane, being yeah. a little, little kid that grew up with Slipknot or whatever. But then afterwards, Jim's like, yeah, that thing you were doing with the kicks was really cool. I think if we could, like, uh, weave in and out of that some way. And I was like, you do know I'm not your drummer with, <laughs> without a mask on. And uh, I'd never know if he got that joke because yeah. you laughed and he didn't laugh. And I was like, fuck. Well, does this he, is the thing. Does he I, hate me? I think as well, like, there's probably people listening to this who were big Slipknot, you know, Slipknot fans. And they're like, we might sound like the biggest arseholes on the planet, but it's just the way that we are. Who, me and you? Just the, you know, like the, the way that we, the banter, the banter that we've you got. You sound like arseholes. You're doing the classic guest thing where, oh, I hope I don't come across bad. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like the way that you, I don't know, maybe I'm, you are just you're overthinking it I overthink it you're overthinking it because you're in one of the biggest fucking metal bands in the world whereas I am a pauper you're not a so I can just you know I can just talk shit I think it was cool I, I remember Jim being really nice but I always in the back of my head I'm like does he think I'm a twat because no, I made I've, that joke he did say afterwards how great you were at drums <sighs> I mean it's the same as Chris Penny he came to a New York show Oh, don't upstage me with Chris Penny. Let's leave it on that. Let's leave, well, it, on. leave it on that. Jim thinks I'm an excellent drummer and he doesn't much care for Chris <laughs> Penny. <laughs> um, recording process. Yeah. We haven't even got there. So the first record we did, it was like, I did some ad-libbing, did some little bits and bobs, you know, like little bass lines or whatever. But the brunt of it, you know, is, uh, you know, Jim has stuff, Jim has ideas and... I was just like, here's demos, learn that, you know, and then we'd sit and we'd record as like mm. me, Jim and Mick and and Jay, and then Clown would be like there and he'd like... So I, you demo as in like someone has a riff and you jam for, on it? Demoing for Jay to play drums to. So you're sat in front of a computer? No, no. So like we've all got our own stations... So kind of like this, this is me, it would be Jim, and then Jay's whole kit's fully mic'd up. Yeah. And we play to him. Okay, so you are jamming. Yeah, but it's for his drums, for the main tracking for the album. I want to know the writing. The writing? Well, I wasn't involved in any of that stuff. But if I came... Oh, we're talking about the... the first record. Okay, I'm talking shit. So I was just getting that record out of the way. Get that out of the fucking way. Get that out it's old news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, this one was started with, you know, same again. Jim has ideas of where it comes from and whatever. And But uh, Clown asked me, you know, he wanted to put my musical knowledge, you know, because I play piano and other shit like that. So he was just like, I'd like to, you know, I've got these ideas. Can you see what you want to do you know, do with it so you know fuck around with them and I worked on stuff here and that was like for about a year and we came up with a bunch of stuff and you know it was great for me it's hard to work on the text sometimes you know like if you're in a room and you go dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I don't want it like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I want it dun, 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 yeah, yeah, you know yeah. so sometimes it, you know it's a bit of a fucking long process so uh, and sometimes it's like i don't know what you want me to do or you know because i want it to be the best you yeah. know what i mean i want to make him happy i want to but you don't want to tread on anyone's toes at the same time there's that as well yeah so it's you know so when we, we then we meet up and everyone's ideas we did a lot of jamming uh one of the track spiders so hang on now we're talking about the new one new one right so there's a track spiders on that and it's you know Jay was there, me and Jim and Clown and me. We were in oh, where the fuck were we? Sun Sunset Sound, same studio where I auditioned. You know, and like a lot of memories. Yeah, but you know, bass lines, bump, 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 and like 
Jay puts a beat to it. Groups of seven, nice. I like that. That's what yeah. I'd have done. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> so, you know, he puts his beat to it, so he's matching mine, so it's not like a straightforward, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and. I mean, that sounds sick. It does sound sick, but, you know, it's, you know, he matches to what, how I'm playing it. So there's that, and then, you know, Jim puts some fucking killer fucking solo on it, and then it just kept evolving and evolving, and then. So he, that is a jam. It's situation jamming, yeah and then how does that get put down into a demo so then greg who does all the the producer he'll take stuff and then he will you know he'll be like let's do it like this let's chop it up like that or why don't we try this section and why don't we do that and you know greg's such a fucking he's a master what he does greg fiddleman and it's the sonics that he gets and you know I was having a conversation with a company recently telling them that we still, you know, used guitar rig, which is like fucking... Yeah, even I know that. It's like, but it's like not the best shit in the world, is it? You wouldn't expect it to be on a record. But you, we did something on it that couldn't be fucking replicated and it so sounds it, great, so we put it on the record. Do you know what I mean? Oh, what, it was done in demo stage and yeah, you, but you just couldn't recapture well, the vibe? Well, it just doesn't sound good. Oh, no I matter what you, I know that fucking feeling, especially with like a guitar effect. You'd make it on your fucking computer with whatever you've got. And then when you go to try and make it again with like thousands of pounds of equipment, yeah. it doesn't have the vibe no, of that moment. And that's the thing. Like we had a room with fucking crazy mics, amazing drums and stuff like that. But some demo guitar that was done on a 50 quid software. What's the part that you're talking about? Because by I, the time this comes out, the album will be out. I can't remember. But there's a, oh, no, because there's a bunch of it. There's a ton of shit, like a little clean guitar or something like that. Right, any quirky guitar might have been guitar rig. You have a yeah, million people going out and maybe, buying yeah. guitar rig. Now. I think there's some guitar, maybe guitar rig bass in it. I could be fucking wrong, but don't quote me on that. But I, I know for a fact that we were in the studio. And I'm like, oh, what is that? Is that my tone? I know it's guitar. That's, ba- that's fucking guitar rig, DI so, bass. So you did a lot of a lot more writing on this one than you did on oh, the last. Oh yeah, one. I mean, it's, we were together for a lot. You know, four months we were in LA. Four months writing. No, four months recording. Well, the writing was in- included within that because we were taking developed songs in demo format, which we jammed in December. Yeah. And in 2019, we started playing those songs to record. But, you know, we were still, like, adding stuff. And then it stuff. changes, yeah. And then it changes Which is again. kind of what we do as well, similar thing. Yeah, it just it evolves and it keeps growing. And But what we started off was fucking awesome. Do you know what I mean? Like, the basis of it was great from fucking years ago. So now when you get to that, you're like, oh, that's a fucking killer idea. Or we'd get, like, Jay's drums. We'd be like, oh, instead of fucking, you know, we'll just keep it simple. And the impact, you're like, wow, that riff fucking hits way more. You know, stuff like that. And it changes the feel of the song. There's a bit of that on Unsainted. There's like, there could have been space for a busy drum beat, but there's not. There's just not. that classic fucking slipknot. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's, that's Greg's fucking vision, you know what I mean? And it's... So when you're tracking, yeah. is it, drums first everything else over the top or do you track live so we're tracking with jay like like we did on the last record the record before yeah so we've got our own stations they're getting recorded whilst he's playing to us so that's what's giving you that push and pull thing again but obviously but he's, then later yeah the guitars I mean, are overdubbed we recorded some click tracked and then we record some without click and on not, the fucking record without a click most, you know, some songs sounded better without a click. Some songs sounded better with a click. I think the majority is it was without a click. They felt more live without a click. Wow. Yeah. And that's that, that's 100% listening back. I could, the right choice. I could totally hear it. I'm like, that fucking goes really good then. And it pulls back when you need it to pull back. So. See, we... When we're in the studio, that does happen, but it's always like I was saying earlier with me doing my click tracks live. We'd always still click track it, and then we would just change the click speed. So it would sometimes take fucking twenty minutes to figure out what the push and pull that you want is. But I think that's more 
so editing is easier later on. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. Because we but don't that's have why four you be months. Tight. Yeah, because we don't have four <laughs> months in a fucking studio. I mean, yeah, and it's. it's uh, I mean, look, the Rage Against Machine, Evil Empire. I mean, that's a live album. That sounds fucking nuts. It's the fucking best. Damn. Is that your favourite Rage album? Yeah. Same. And it's that's live, no click track. I could be fucking wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's no. Click. I'm pretty sure it, it is, is uh, just full on. And you could, that snare is just so. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's just, and that gives a fucking in your face nuts feel to the song that I feel like if they played that to it just would sound shit personally yeah I think I'm just as a drummer it's so much easier to play to a clip because it oh, just 100%. Takes, takes one bit away from your brain so like, I don't have to worry about time maybe I'm just lazy but that's what makes playing live fun I think I would I, love to play to a click as well, but... Yeah, I just want... My thing with playing live is, like, I just want to be the best yeah. that I can be. And with but, a click, I can be. But it's that thing, like I said about Motorhead, if you took the, gave them a click, it'd be fucking shit. Yeah, not if you programmed it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Lemmy sitting there with fucking <laughs> logic out, yeah. programming it. R.I.P. Lem. Big Lem. I mean, I love that band. They're fucking, I still love them, but I mean, like, you know what I mean? Ooh. Right, where were we at? The recording process for that. Um, and then... Sorry, I just, I don't want to keep waving out to... No, 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 it's good, because someone needs to keep me on track, because otherwise it'd be three hours long, and it's already one hour and 20 minutes long. Do you normally talk about the, how long you've been doing it for? Yeah, all the time. Oh, good. And then sometimes I'll be like, yeah, it's about three hours long, and then it comes out and it's an hour and 40 minutes, and people are like, why is it an hour and 40 minutes long? And I'm like, because loads of it was crap. <laughs> loads of it was either crap, or people said stuff that they don't want the public to know. I feel like this has been quite constructive I feel like this has been excellent excellent and this going to bring me uh, we can you got anything else you want to talk about that album this yeah this is the point where I oh, sort of so we had two studios cool. obviously are we in one of them right now well this is where I do my my music this is where I did some of the bits in here like fiddling around you know it's not fucking it's not Abbey Road but I mean, it does have a nice ceiling. I'd, it like does. A drum, I'd like to hear a drum kit in here. No, this is like... Also, and then, you know, back there I've got the, the workshop where I do the guitar repairing. Yeah, Don't do that a, anymore. See but. a nice Dremel. Dremel! <laughs> <laughs> right, carry on. You've got two studios. Right, yeah, so we got this... It was like, you know, the, the creative lab and that was like clowns... Well, it was everyone's rooms, but it was, you know, clowns in there doing his stuff and mod, he's got loads of modular synths and experimenting with top sounds and... He's got this really beautiful Gretsch kit and, you know, it was a place where you could go and that whole, I'm here, record my parts, go home. It was to get rid of that kind of feeling. It was like, let's go in here and make music, come up with shit. So me and Clown did a bunch of the in-between songs. We did a lot of synths, there's a bunch of synths and shit and melodies and the opening track, um... You know, it's it's an ex- instrumental. It's kind of like how the bands have always started their the the you know their album, and uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to give away what it is because I don't want to ruin people. I want people to listen to listen to it and think what they think it comes from or whatever. But you know, we did shit in there that I was like, what <laughs> is that going to be on the record? Yeah, it made it on the record, you know? It was nuts. It was... Exper- what, as in, like, experimental? Yeah, I mean, it's... You know, when... <laughs> how do I describe it? Have you seen Walk Hard, Dewey Cox? Yeah. You know, when he With takes... John C. Riley. Yeah, yeah, when he takes acid, and yeah. he's in his acid stage, and he's got fucking 700 people in the recording studio, like yeah. elephants and stuff like that, and fucking didgeridoos. It was like to that. Get his vibe. It yeah. was like that, you know, and it was just like anything goes, kind of. If it was good, if it sounds great, you know, make something of it and clown, you know, that guy fucking hats off to him. Like, he was in there fucking first thing, last one out. And, you know, what he came up with and his vision 
of taking what we did. It's fucking nuts. So, because he's an he's originally a drummer before Slipknot. He's a drummer, right? Yeah, he plays. Yeah, it's weird how drummers sometimes. He, I don't know if he can play or just dabble with other instruments, but I'm sort of the same. I'm a drummer. I'm not. I'm not comparing myself to Clown from fucking Slipknot here, but I'm a drummer. I can sort of dabble on other stuff, but I'm pretty good at having ideas. As long as I've got someone with me that can carry out that idea. Yeah, I mean, he's really into these modular synths at the moment, which are those little, the little carts, square thingies, the slots. Yeah. You slot it into a big flight case. Hans Zimmer thing. shit. Yeah, and he's just like tweaking on that, and you're playing around with that, and he's got all these effects and tape machines. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like a fucking, it's, it's old school shit. Very old school stuff. Like we'd take. I'd, I'd play a fucking synth part and then it would get put into the tape machine then it would get fed through something else and then it would get the speed would be brought all the way down but then a volume pedal would be inserted something like stuff that I was like Whoa. wacky yeah and then you hear the sound of it and you're like that sounds fucking awesome so four months of tweaking around with stuff like that you're gonna get some good shit yeah um and then that album's out now. Let's move off that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the point where I'm like, okay, I don't know what else I can put in unless you want to say anything else about it. Um, no, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of what we've all done. Um, and then you've got a lot of touring that will happen. Now we've got loads of touring. On the, bo- on the back of that. Which brings me to my next thing. See how I've done that segue, yeah? Yeah. Number one music podcast in the UK, occasionally. Um... I wonder how many maggots will listen to this and don't know who I am and do actually, like you were saying earlier, think I'm an arrogant asshole. That's what I meant. It's part... Yeah, you meant me. You said I know, both no, of you. us. I mean, even like, you know, just the way it's that we speak. It's character though, isn't it? It's the way that we are. I've never, I am like this and that's, this is what we're talking about. People think that you're a fucking stuck-up cunt or you're being a sarky shit. It's not. It's just the way that we are. It's an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste. It's acquired, some people get it. Right, that brings me on next, to my next thing. So you, obviously, you are English, but you are in a band what is American. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. Let's talk about that. America. Let's talk about touring America as an Englishman. Likes, hates. I love how every day you can wake up and everything's the same. Be the rider and... The consistency of touring in America is excellent. At your Once, level, yes. Well, that, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we just did a Euro tour and, you know, some days you're just like, wow. Like, what, are they fucking up the rider? No, not, not on our end, but like, you know, some festivals where, you know, like we was in Italy of all fucking places and, you know, being Italian or Sicilian... Uh, Pretty sure I've only got t- two listeners from Italy because I've looked at the figures before, okay. so you can say what you want. <laughs> no, and like my missus, she took me to uh, Osteria Francescana, which is uh, Massimo Bottura's place. Or Osteria, a, sorry. a very posh restaurant for anyone that doesn't know that. Yeah, and afterwards got to the, the site and uh, this fucking catering company gave baked beans with meat. So it's literally baked beans, and they put some sort of meat inside of it. And that was that was the main meat dish for Slipknot. For Slipknot, for and they Slipknot, had, they had pasta with like just pepper, ground pepper in it, and like not the cheapest olive oil ever. Your Slipknot's that was it. Italy was rider like, is the same as straight from the so side. Italy I, rider. I didn't even have any dinner. Poor me. Poor me. I've just <laughs> eaten at a fucking Michelin, st- twice Michelin star restaurant. Three times, actually. Three, sorry. I think it's three. Sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> um, right, so you like the consistency of touring in America. What do you dislike? Uh, wow. Whoa, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Fucking hell, mate. I'm going to turn the noise gate off for that so we can get that on here. Um, Bruce is like, I hate it when he goes to America. <laughs> yeah, he's been all right, actually. Don't slag America off, because America gets well I love America. when you slag him off. And my girlfriend's American. I live in America at the moment. Uh, it's so hard. To, 
I'm thinking we can relate on this. Yeah, I but mean, your band is stratospherically more big than my band. I think some things I don't. It kind of everything gets a bit repetitive. I because I miss a little bit of the the oldie ways. You know, like you can go to like Italy and you see something old, or you go to Norway and there's something old. Oh, there's, on Euro tours, there's always like, oh, should we walk to this cathedral? But it's fucking eight hundred years yeah, old. And I find like in America, though, we're always playing. It's always like fucking arse end outside of town and it's a bit like oh it's another amphitheater and the yeah. nearest thing that's around is you can walk to Chipotle and that's about it yeah no you can't even walk to Chipotle there's nothing around there's nothing and I know that's like whatever but I mean after a while it's kind of like what should you do on your day off luckily you know if we're in a place where the day because sometimes the day off it's just a stop so it's like the, the bus pulls in we stay there till 12 o'clock at night and then off you go again, do the next drive, and you're at the next venue. So, you know, sometimes on the day off, it would be nice to be somewhere where if you stopped, it's like... America, just that, for how big it is, though, there is, like, huge areas with nothing. Yeah. Driving through New Mexico, you can go to Roswell. I haven't been there yet. You can I've go been to, to Roswell, but I haven't, been, I haven't seen, the like, all the... You can go to Walter White's house... I'm trying to think, but I can't remember why it is, but our routing always goes, or routing, if you're American, goes through New Mexico, and I just remember we're like in the van for like eight hours, and there's nothing. I know that American bands hate touring in Europe. They fucking you know, hate, hate it. it. <laughs> and I'm the opposite. I don't hate I touring, love touring in America. In I love touring full stop, and especially at a band of our level, you get looked after a lot more. Yeah in mainland Europe and then in America and in the UK they treat you like shit really <laughs> well, just not like shit but it's like here you go there's some waters whereas Europe's like we have put on this spread for you <laughs> here it is I do miss the days I don't know why they sound like a fucking vampire <laughs> 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 in Transylvania, Transylvania <laughs> the fucking the your band is unbelievable is your band big in Transylvania <laughs> oh huge mate um, I, I miss the days of when I would play and I'd sleep in a parcel van, you post miss, van. You miss those days. I mean, I'd love to relive it for like one day. If I could just do like one day of it, just and just document so, it, just, just so I can show people what it was like touring. Just to remember what it was like. Yeah, just so people know that it's like I wasn't just fucking, oh yeah, here you go. You're in you, it. Jim, Clown, Corey play the bar fly in Camden Oof. and then you sleep in a postal van. I mean, even worse venues than that, like one of those hardcore all dayers where there's like 10 bands. Everyone about- wants to use your gear because you're the only cunt there with a dual rectifier and they you just use it anyway. You're talking about the world I'm still in. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> an all dayer. I fucking hate an all dayer. Especially now, it's like playing last at an all dayer, no one wants to see you. I remember once getting three Walker's Crisps and four bottled waters, which were boiling hot. That was it. That was a rider. And I mean, our bass player UK rider. went to Burger King because he had no money and ate ketchup sachets. Do you still have to go to the visa office like paupers like us, or is I there do. a magic one? There's no magic one for visas. you still got to go. You still have to go to the... Well, they've moved the embassy now. It's not there anymore. Where is it? In London. They've, well, it's, the, it's kind of near there. It's not the same one. I remember the first time going in there, I was shitting myself. Even though I haven't got a criminal record or do anything sketchy. Do you ever get stopped at customs when you go in? Uh, what? In as America? In they, they ever like, because what happens Sometimes me, they're like, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, musician. And they're like, what band are you in? And I'm like, Slipknot. And they're like, every, so I've had like four times someone will go, you're not in Slipknot. And I was like, I am. Yeah, and then they Google it. And then they, they've obviously got a computer there. And they're like, oh, wow. I'm like, I wouldn't like, I mean, I've done a V, I've been vetted. Yeah. Someone's interviewed me. And I get so- it all the fucking time. And then the same, thing, even though I've been in the band for four fucking years, they'll Google it and then I go, well, none of these people are you. It's like, well, that photo's from fucking 2010. Yeah. And then like, well, why are you in this band? You're American. <laughs> and I'm like, well, because there's no fucker in America that could do it, all right? <laughs> so they had to get me. Because that's legally what has to happen in the visa process. Yeah. They need to p- prove that no yeah. one can do it better. 
I was just wondering if maybe it was easier for you, but it might actually be harder. No, in terms I, of people going, you're not in Slipknot. No, I mean, it, it's... I think once it's... I think I'm on my fourth 01. And like now the process is very easy. But some places, like going, flying into New York, I've noticed like if you fly into certain places, it's fucking shit. Like flying to JFK... Oof, they shit, fuck, they f- long lines. They fucking hate you. Do you know what else is the real shit one? When you do the customs at Dublin, you ever do that? I can't remember. If you have a stopover in Dublin, you do American customs in, at, du- in Dublin. It's actually kind of sick, and it means when you get into a, America, you don't it's have- like a normal flight. You just fucking walk out. Really? It's pretty cool, but... They vet you like crazy because oh, really? those people are terrified of losing their jobs because uh, they're not in America. Yeah, they're pre-approving you to go into America, but in Dublin. Wow! So they grill you. But Do they have the same machines as in America? Everything. Ooh! And they're all American. Oh, they're all American. Oh, so it's like an it's a, literally like episode. you're in America, but it's a part of Dublin. I remember once I, when was it? I think it was the first bit of touring. And I stuck a banana in my bag in the top pocket and I forgot about it. And I also forgot that my passport was in the same pocket. And it was one of those army bags. So it was like sealed. It didn't like seep out so I could get to the problem after a couple of days. Yeah. It fucking melted half my passport. And it a melted. banana? Yeah, it what turned into this black. It turned into this like black brown. Black acid. It was like four weeks it was in there. Oh, rotting shit. away. And because the bag's like sealed army bag, it like didn't fucking... And I was like, I didn't need my passport. So anyway, it ripped up the fucking the page with my, v, my O1 on it. So we flew to Japan, managed to get there uh, like okay. And then they, I was fucked getting back. It's quite back. funny doing customs in Japan because no one speaks English and they, <laughs> you just have to like mime guitar or whatever. And they go, <laughs> yeah, come in. So they... <laughs> So I had to go to the American embassy and like no one was in that day. Someone came in because it was like they fuck, I don't know how it got sorted but must it, have pulled some strings someone there. pulled some strings for me some slip knot strings so we put like the two customs people on the, the guest list they put they put it in yeah nice and did they, they managed come? to go back know? they did come yeah come backstage t- no I didn't see it nah, didn't let them backstage we've got a thing you see so if people don't turn up on your guests this goes out to anyone that's if I ever put them on a guest list if you don't show up I get in trouble because at the end of the night tour manager comes in and goes your guest didn't show I like that though that's good yeah and then like keeps it. we could have lost we could have made some money on those tickets they make you feel better <laughs> wow that is fucking no it's good um, that's why I didn't hit you up about download yeah but you can get guest list are you there anyway then so. I was but because I already knew there was probably another way in I was like you, you know, can always ask me. I know, but you. how many people did you personally put on the download guest list? Ten. No, more than that. Yeah, it must be. Twelve. More than that. Yeah. I didn't want to be just another number, so I just figured it out You're elsewhere. You're not just another number. Please. Just another number. Um, we're going to fucking close it out here, but something we do on the podcast, which is you can tell me your top five bands or artists of all time. All right. No pressure. No order. Uh, no order unless there is an order. No, you got like a fuck one. an order because sometimes I'll just put, no. Pink Floyd is, has to be on there. Right, so then we're going to pause on that. Top Pink Floyd album. My favourite Pink Floyd record. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. Uh, would you classify metal as a record? Surely not. You're going to put that above... I really love that one. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I would, I, well, right. You must have a number one. <sighs> that would that would surprise me if that was your number one. It it's can up be. there. It's up there. But wish but you, probably it, wish you were here or come on, that's the right answer. Or animals. Really? Yeah. Where are you putting Dark Side? I like Dark Side, but a bit obvious, a bit petrolly. <laughs> What's your favourite Pink Floyd record? Greatest hits. <laughs> greatest, greatest hits. Um, I would go Wish You Were Here. Dark Side Animals. Yeah. And then I would almost go as far as Don't Care, Don't Care, Don't Care. Mm. I hate Roger Waters so much. I, I like his bass playing. 
I think it's an excellent bass player. On on echoes where it, it drops the boom bam down boom boom down damp man that's fucking sick especially on the live says, in, the live a, in Pompeii it says a lot when Gilmore sells all those guitars donates all the money to a climate change charity yeah Roger Waters left the UK to protest the ban on fox hunting <laughs> that's the two people in Pink Floyd anyway we done Pink Floyd <laughs> next that's my political statement. Oh, <laughs> he's so political. Politics. Oh, I've got an opinion. Go on. It's never going to change it. Uh, you give me four more artists. You need to give me. Okay, them. Metallica. Definitely. Yes. Yes. No one ever says Metallica. Metallica are my favourite band of all time. Uh, and people say Lars Ulrich's shit. Fuck off. Yeah, fuck you. This is almost a recurring theme on every episode. You of don't know podcast. what you're talking about. Right. Lars Ulrich is amazing, and if you don't think he's amazing, Thomas Hucker would disagree as well with you. So. He's the fucking, he's the man, and he's a great drummer. So, um, fuck off. All right, go on. Give me Metallica albums in order. Ooh. Come on, you must have thought about it. I think about this once a day. Number one, Justice for All. Yes. We're best friends. <laughs> justice for all, but if it was injustice for Jason, I don't care. I know, but <laughs> I, I do. Li- I do sounds. like it with the bass turned up sometimes. Does that exist? Is it does. Injustice for Jason. Listen to it. It's fucking awesome. How can I listen to that? that it's on YouTube. It? I think it? some clever clogs did it from get like Guitar Hero. Maybe it could be wrong. Oh so yeah, it took the bass lines. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Number two metallic album. Uh. And then we're going to go to Master of Puppet. No, Ride the Lightning. Yes. And it's always those two, for me, they swap on number two. Yeah. I'm like, I'm really in a Ride the Lightning time right now, but sometimes Puppets goes there. I'm going to say Ride the Lightning purely for Call of Cthulhu. And just the mosh riffs. Yeah. If and you took those riffs and put them in a hardcore band. Trapped Under Ice. Every song's great. I Actually, now that I want to listen to the whole... Of Right, yeah, we'll do that now. in a minute. Um, right, we're two for two. Number so then, three. Then uh, Master of Puppets. Yeah. Uh, what are we at? Four? Four. You got, so you've got, realistically, you've got two more. Black Album. You're going to put Black Album four? Yeah. Okay, this is the only time we differ. Because, yeah, okay, I like Kill em All. I think it's a great record. But... I actually prefer the Black Album, if I'll be honest. Mm. Of Wolf and Man's probably one of my favourite tracks off of that. And then you've got Kill Em All 5. Kill Em All 5. With very similar, except for... I actually like Loaded as well, but I'm not putting that up in there. You didn't put it in the top five. No. You can, you're allowed to like it. I like Death Magnetic. I'd listen to the Black Album more than Kill Em All. So I'd there say, you go. Yeah. I feel like maybe that's true for me as well. And I'm just being an elitist little bitch. Yeah, kill them all. All right, Metallica. We got two bands. Megadeth. I don't know enough to have a big conversation. We've already had a conversation about how I should know the basis. Rust in Peace is the best record. Holy Wars, is that on that? Yes, it is. That is a banging song. Also, Tornado Souls, which I said earlier. I also feel like I know that song. It's the greatest solo. It's so good. Holy Wars is fucking sick as well. Yep. Right, okay, that's enough because I can't... Pantera. Yeah. Definitely Pantera. What's your... What's your... Give me top three Panteras. Far Beyond Driven, number one. Yeah, correct. <laughs> then... Uh... Cowboys from Hell, then Volga. Yeah, and then yeah, fourth would friends. be... I really love... Um, say it. Oh. Are you going to say Are you going to say it? Are you going to say Reinventing the Steel? Yeah, I was. I love it. I the, love that record. The There's fucking, so many fucking riffs on that record. The great, the Trub, great Southern Trenko is great. Don't get me wrong. And Floods is one of my favourites. But... But that is the best song on that. The fucking riffs on... On fucking... Oh, I can't remember the name of it. The fucking reinventing the, reinventing the fucking the cowbell song. I can't remember what it is. Track three, and it comes back in with the first riff, but there's just a gigantic cowbell on it. It's sick. 
If anyone's listening, put on Reinventing the Steel from the beginning. <laughs> and just listen, exactly listen like to the fucking riffs. And get all that crap out of your head that... Give me another band. And what am I left with? I think you got... Pink Floyd, Metallica, Megadeth. Megadeth, Pantera. Pantera. You got one more. Fuck. What do I listen to? I know one which is pretty left field that you love. Left field? Not the band left field, but... I'm going to say sixth. You're going to put them up there? I'm going to put them up there. Not just to shout out your boys? No. And I'm not going to say my own band, because that's lame. So I mean, he's fucking lame. I'm glad you didn't say your own band. No. So I'm going to say sixth. Favourite sixth album? Death of a Dead Day. I, I don't think many technical metal bands have touched that. Do you know what? It's fucking great, but... The vocals is just too much for me sometimes. Yeah, well, I just cut the vocals. It's like Necrophages. I just cut the vocals out. Oh, Necrophages vocals are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the same with all death metal. Some, like, sometimes the singing just fucking rapes my mind. But I don't know if I've got a knack. I've got some ability to just... It just Zone it out. It zones out, and I just listen to the music. It's not either one of the vocalist's tones. It's just there's so much going on. I can't process it out I don't have that I just think that, that plug in that V-Man has in his head yeah I mean it's for some some people just listen to music and all they can hear are vocals and that's it you know like some people just know the lyrics to everything I'm just not that person I think I've trained my brain to just don't, and that doesn't mean that I ignore melodies or something obviously I understand there's vocal melodies there I get it but it's like Metallica I don't know the fucking lyrics and I've got half Metallica's artwork tattooed all over my body. But still what Metallica you got? You got a fucking, there's a pus head on your hand. I've got KH3 off of ESP, Kirk Hammett's ESP. It's on my hand. I've got one sanitarium. It's all fucking pus it's all head pus on head. that arm, isn't it? Damage Incorporated. That's off the Black Album. I think that was uh, I'm Inside, I'm You. That was a random poster. And then I got Justice for All on the ribs. Wow, fuck me. And then Sabatru on the neck. Fuck me, I didn't realise quite how many you had. I like Metallica. Are you boys with Metallica now? No, but as a funny story, with Mastodon, we were supporting them. And Brent was like, look, come downstairs, Kirk's here. Like, I said my text, like a big fan of yours. But, you know, pop down like they want to meet you and shit. And I was like, oh, wicked. So, so I come to the front door, the, the bar, and it's like all shut off just for them. And they got like fucking big meanie security guard. And he just fucking stops me. What the fuck are you doing in here? I thought it was like some Metallica fan slipped in, covered in tattoos. Like the guy fucking was like, you're not coming in here. I was like, oh, tech for Brent. Mastodon, he was like, what? He's like, Brent. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you could just see him, Lars and Kirk Hammett just looking at me going, Oh, hey, man. But Punisher. Then, yeah, they thought, I, thought they Punisher. only thought I was the Punisher. But then they just was like, after after I bought Kirk Hammett two stupidly expensive vodka drinks, it was like in Norway or somewhere. And like, at that Fuck time, me, I, yeah. at that time I, wasn't, for that. I wasn't making much money. So for me, I was like, oh, I bought Kirk Hammett a couple of drinks. Nice. But um, he never bought me a drink in return. <laughs> so Kirk Hammett, if you listen to it, so you're not boys now. I would have thought maybe you'd crossed over and you played some shit together. No. We'd, Are we, you both? We, we don't talk. No. Are you both? Well, we've got that tour coming up, so hopefully we can be friends. Slipknot in Metallica? Yeah, in Australia. Yeah, oh, nah, you're going to be boys. I hope so. I'm going to play what their guitars. Boys with Metallica? I'll show them how to play. If you're boys with Metallica, that's unbelievable. Some guitars. I wonder if they'll remember you from that, that Punisher in Norway. With all I don't know. I always wonder stuff like that because it's like I used to work for John Five for a bit. In Rob Zom- in well, Rob, Rob Zombie at the time. Yeah. Like, does he go? Oh, that guy at Tech for me for a bit. Is he he joined Slipknot. Or <laughs> well, does he not know? Or do they not? Because I saw him the other day. Like Piggy D, the bassist. I know him, and like we're friends. And he came up to me and was like, gave me a big hug. But Piggy jo- D is his name. Piggy D. Well, I call him, well, I call him Piggles. Pig, but that's Piggy what D. I call Pig Destroyer, the band. Yeah. So that's confusing to Oh, me. no, yeah, he's called Piggy D. I call him Piggy D. 
and uh, he just walked past me. So, I, <laughs> so well, you've been blanked. I got blanked by John Five. I have that same to bring it back round. I have that same situation every time I see Richie Beckett. I'm really? like, you don't know who I am. I've auditioned for your old band. You should go and say hello. It's always weird. <sighs> Sometimes we get that. We get that as musicians. I've toured with so many fucking people, and I know them. And I've definitely done it to other people as well. I just feel... No, I don't know. I don't... Uh, maybe, like, once or twice, but the majority of people I remember... Like, I'll go up to, like, a monitor guy that I used to work with and go, hey, man, how's it going? They'd be like, oh, I thought, you, I thought you'd forget about all us lot. <laughs> yeah, I think my band was a bit like that with you as well. They were like, oh, he remembers us. <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a fucking... I'm not, I haven't turned into a fucking magical creature. I don't know. You're in a fucking gigantic band. We're just t- we're just having a legitimate conversation of the fact that you might be friends with Metallica soon. That's how yeah. big your band is. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, you got yeah. anything else you want to say? I'm probably going to call it there. So we we're going to call it. Sort about we, think about dinner. We can go for a curry, maybe. Go for so a we, curry. Do you want a curry? My favourite Chinese is now shut. That's down the road. I'm pissed off. Bastards. So if anyone do you wants want to, to shout them out, <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of the Chinese? They're called Imperial China. And they did the best dim, proper dim sum as well. Like oh, Chinese. I hate it when you get like a, a frozen dim sum. Give me no, a nice this was, steamed. This was proper steamed, like Hong Kong style dim sum. And they're fucking shut, cunts. So to, to round up the podcast, fuck you <laughs> to V-Man's old Chinese restaurant. What are we going to do? Are we going to go out for a curry or are we going to get... Are you going to cook? I can cook if you don't want to leave. But then you want to go I for a drive care. in the motor, don't you? I don't care. Yeah, you do have a nice Just, car. Let's not talk about how nice your car is. But I did turn up and I thought, oh, VMA's got a new car. It's very nice. <laughs> um, I'm turning into Alan Partridge. Thanks for coming on, mate. You're welcome. It the pleasure. reason it's happened so late, yeah. I have to say this to my friends, is because I didn't want to put you on the spot. On the spot? Like, as in, when I started the podcast, obviously my intention is to get my mates that are in big bands on it but then I don't want to put them out and make it feel like you have to say like, oh yeah, but then you don't want to do it. So no, I appreciate you I do think it. this is kind of funny though because this is the first podcast I've ever done and it feels like I'm talking to people but I'm not. You're just talking to me. I'm just talking to you in my f- kitchen. And this fucking aeroplane's ruined everything so we're going to end it there. Thanks, mate. Oh, that's a loud... That's a loud one. It's fucked the whole podcast and I'm going to trash the whole thing. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Peace out, maggots. Maggots.